thank you all for coming and I think people will be walking in as we go along but uh, first of all I know um, you guys are probably interested in, in an announcement that we've been talking about a lot on social media this week and so I'm just gonna say um, Nick Please take the mic, you're much better at this than I am. So come along and tell everybody a, li a little bit more about the Blockchain Innovation Center. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, not better than you at this. Um, so if you don't know me, my name is Nick Cowan and I'm from GSX and I had the privilege of speaking here in November when Denise put me through the, put me through the grill and asked me a, a bunch of questions. Um, so let me tell you a couple of things about what we've done and where we're going, and I'll talk about the BIC. So we came here in November and laid out our plans then to open GBX, the Gibraltar Blockchain Exchange, which will be a rules-based system for ICOs, token issuers, to come to Gibraltar, come to GBX. And the way it works is you can appoint one of our approved sponsors, uh, we've just started releasing approved sponsors last week. We approved three and we have seven more applications right now in process. And what a sponsor will do is if you're an issuer, the sponsor will walk you through everything you need to do to comply with our token sale rules based around best practices of disclosure and transparency, etc., etc. So as a token sale platform and a cryptocurrency exchange that's managed and known by a stock exchange, the way it works is as follows. We will help you, the issuer, via our sponsor network, uh, ensure that you comply with um, the due diligence requirements that we would expect in terms of investor protection. So technology, commercial, controller, legal, financial, etc. We help you make sure your disclosures in the white paper reach our token sale rules. Um, and then we approve you and help you launch. So when we talk about launching, what we're doing is we're creating effectively through our technology a, a landing page for you, the issuer. We approve you, you launch your public sale, and then what we're doing is we're trying to de-risk the transaction for you, because for those of you who perhaps don't know, the way token sales work at the moment is if you're an issuer, you have to effectively identify investors, you have to clear all those investors yourself in terms of KYC and AML. It's a real pain in the ass and then you've got to collect the ether in and then exchange it for your token. And that's where the risk comes in. That's where you hear about phishing and hacking and everything else. Uh, the hackers, which is now a full-time job, they can effectively replicate your website and investors who may not know any better, unfortunately, send their ether to the wrong wallet address, etc. So there's a lot of risk out there. What we do as the exchange is we clear every single buyer of your token. You have to buy the token through our exchange. We do all the heavy lifting for you. We also collect all the ether for you. So it's a, it's a one-stop shop in terms of a token sale platform. At the end of the public sale, you can then list your token on our cryptocurrency exchange, GBX. So that's all in the process of opening now. So the sponsors are being approved and we have a backlog of uh, many, many issuers who are looking to either launch their token or actually move their token onto GBX. So we're obviously very, uh, very fortunate to have been in a position where being in Gibraltar, with everything that the government has done with DLT, everything the regulator has done, that we're basically trying to ride that wave as best we can, but also bring um, best practices to a market where there are no practices. So we've had to draft rules where there are no rules, but the reception we received globally, as in Hong Kong and Singapore last week, has been exceptional. So, um, so that's, that's the good news. Um, when I was here in November, we also talked about we're, we were just starting out on our journey of our own ICO, uh, which was um, completed in February. So we, we went on a global roadshow, and that was really um, useful for us in terms of experience, because if we're going to lecture people about what they have to do to do the uh, token sale, we felt it was pretty important for us to, um, to do our own, plus we needed the money. So actually there, was a, there were a couple of reasons why we wanted to do it, but, uh, but we completed that in February. That was, um, luckily for us, uh, we got it away. We raised $27 million in the ROC token. And um, you know, obviously markets have been tricky since then, so we were, we, I think we captured a, a moment in time which was fantastic. So now it's all about execution. And GBX will be opening um, basically now, and then the main exchange, the Gibraltar Stock Exchange, we're moving that onto the blockchain as we speak and by Q4 this year, we'll hopefully be having tokenized securities 
on the main exchange, moving everything to effectively a digitalized platform. So we, we, uh, we think that's uh, hopefully a first move and very exciting. So it's good to be in Gibraltar. Enough about me. As part of that initiative, what we wanted to do in terms of building GBX and, uh, and trying to put Gibraltar on the, on the map, and you know, I can tell you last week being out in Singapore and Hong Kong, I was with Minister Isola, we had a couple of hundred people turn up in Singapore and Hong Kong, and for those of you that haven't been out there, I've been out there three times a year for the last five years, and normally we get ten people and a couple of tumbleweeds and a cricket. It's been quite hard historically to get people to come and listen to Gibraltar, because if they're looking at the EU, they've historically said, I'll just go to Dublin or Luxembourg. We've always had a challenge, and I think with DLT, what it's enabled us to do as a jurisdiction is really, really play now a role on a global playing field in terms of Singapore, Zouk, or Gibraltar. We're very much firmly on the map. And I think, you know, Albert was, is, is constantly blown away by the amount of demand that we're seeing as a jurisdiction in business that's looking to relocate to Gibraltar or use the DLT framework and come here and get licensed and regulated. It's a fintech-friendly jurisdiction, so we're in, a, we're in a very strong position. But part of that was we wanted to launch something called the Blockchain Innovation Centre, BIC. And the Blockchain Innovation Centre was something that we thought we could put in place in Gibraltar to really try to do what it says on the tin. Um, you know, you've, you've heard of other jurisdictions having these innovation centres. We wanted to do a couple of things. One was to really is sort of educate, inspire, connect, etc. But to try to have a, a, a facility where perhaps you know, fintechs can come to Gibraltar and instead of taking that huge risk come here and if we can get to a stage where we can provide them with um, office space that allows them to develop their businesses, perhaps access to funding, but also look at ways that we could perhaps drive um, education here in Gibraltar, but also from abroad and bring in and you know, try to do everything we can to keep Gibraltar at the front of where we see this uh, industry going in terms of change. So in terms of innovation, regulation, etc. I think 18 is going to be the year of the regulator. Regulators are catching up globally. Our regulator is, uh, I think, in a very strong position being ahead of the curve. But I think the BIC was, was vital for us. So when we announced that, when we were started on GBX and our Rock Token uh, last year, we obviously wanted to get the Rock Token deal out of the way. That's now done. And now we're starting to turn our attention to really getting this blockchain innovation center going. Um, so at JibFin a couple of weeks ago, my colleague Phil, um, our marketing director, stood on stage and, and talked about the BIC. But we, we first of all want to congratulate Denise, Startup Grind, it's one year anniversary, and I think that's a huge, huge achievement. I think what's happening here is fantastic. Um, and as I said, I got an opportunity in November to bore you. I bored you twice now. Um, but what, we've, what we want to announce is that our Blockchain Innovation Centre is now going to officially tie up with Startup Grind, which I think is really exciting. We're going to look to Denise to effectively provide that leadership role for us. We could have done it, but I think it's actually much better to have that real independence and actually a much better uh, level of expertise than anybody inside our company is ever going to provide. So uh, we wanted to come here tonight and just uh, give you a little bit of update about us, but to also say that you know, I think what Startup Grind and the BIC can do together now We've already had a lot of interest from people in Gibraltar, companies in Gibraltar, who want to support the BIC in terms of actual investment and sponsorship. So I think under Denise's leadership, I think it's going to go from strength to strength. So Denise, well done. We look forward to uh, you telling us what we've got to do for a living. And uh, on that note, I'll give you back to Denise. But thank, thanks for indulging me again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, not sure about the expertise, but thank you anyway. Um, I am obviously Denise Matthews. I've been running Startup Grind for 12 months now as the chapter director. Um, recently I went to San Francisco and while I was there, I had the pleasure of meeting somebody who was actually being onboarded or just had been onboarded to, to um, start a chapter in Andorra. This person happened to be so exciting and interesting and knew so much about blockchain that I said, you need to come to Gibraltar. So I'm just going to introduce Ferran Martinez, who's our guest tonight. So just give him a round of applause. Yeah, 
So I'm going to tell people a little bit about you. Okay. I've got notes. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so Ferran holds the ACB league record and made 156 appearances for the Spanish international team playing basketball. He participated in the Olympic Games, World and European Championships as a professional player. He is an entrepreneur, partner, board member, co-founder of various companies and he holds a degree in financial analysis and equity markets. So, advisor, startup, investor, founder of uh, Global Talent, which is a blockchain sport industry business. So we're gonna go right to the beginning and we're gonna discuss what happened when you were 15, 16 years old. Okay, thank you, ladies. Eh, as you know, eh, okay, I started uh, as a professional basket basketball player very, very early, with only 16 years, no? And when I started, okay, I, I, I was a normal child, no? That likes uh, basketball, but uh, Football Club Barcelona comes to me when I was 13 years old, and in only three years I stayed in the first team. Okay, and um, the career of the players, Passed very very fast, very quick, no. So I stayed ten years in in Barcelona, uh, four years in Panathinaikos in Greece, in Juventus Badalona. But um, okay, when when you are a basketball player or soccer player, it's true that you have a, if you have a very good luck and you are a good player, you have a big contract, no. So it's it's very very important to to have the the mind very very clear, no. Because if not, um, most of the, the athletes stay crazy and uh, start to, to spend a lot of money in, you know, in cars, in many things, no? I, I got very, very good lucky because my family always told me that uh, never forget the, the studies and I continued all my studies until the university, but during my career, uh, because I like, I love the technology, I went to the, the school of informatica, uh, program, programmation, all these things, and also I I did my own system of investments. That was very very strange because uh, the players don't think this, no? They they leave to the agents, uh, to the lawyers, or, or the families these things, no? But uh, my system was that uh, I only extend 30 percent of the of my contracts and the rest of 70% I use for invest uh, in real estate, in, in financial things, or, or all this, no? And most of the players uh, of, the, of my team always ask me uh, what I can, uh, can I do, uh, if good, if I buy this or not, and I said, okay, I, I don't can advise you, uh, I can tell you what I am doing, no? In this way, so maybe as a player I, I start doing investor no and when I finish my career because uh, I always explain that the, the the athletes we have two life the the bubble life so the the real life is when you are player you are famous you you earn a lot of money but when you finish uh, with 33 or 34 years you have to start uh, the real life the, the new life no most of them uh, after five, six years, they don't have any money, no? So that's why during my career I thought that the, the value of the sport is very, very important to, to start after the real life when you finish and that's why I start to create a company. So this motivated you to further your studies because you had an, an early contract and there was things that came, good things came from signing up early but not such great things too so that motivated you to study can you tell us a little bit about why that happened mm -hmm. it's true that uh, i signed my first professional contract with 16 years uh, uh, so my mother have to sign my contract because uh, he was no don't have age still age to, to sign contracts no but uh, okay maybe maybe it uh, was a mistake but uh, you know I, I was very very young because uh, with 16 years old, uh, old uh, I got a lot of um, offers of uh, USA, com uh, USA universities to go to the States to play in universities, but you know that it's impossible if you are professional, no way to, to go to university, no? So, because the university is only for amateurs, no? 
after that I signed a, a, a big contract with Barcelona, but uh, I was uh, the best player of the junior tournament in, in Europe, the European Championship, and I got a lot of offers of NBA, but uh, in 25 years ago, don't exist the, the buyout clause, uh, clauses in the, in the contracts. That's why I, I didn't go to, to NBA, no? And when I got an uh, offer to go to Toronto Raptors in 98, uh, I got very bad lucky because I was the lockout of NBA in 98, and I came back to, to Panathinaikos in, in Greece, and okay, I finished my career in Europe, in Europe no? Uh, but I think the, the lesson is that, uh, okay, you, ha you have to use this first life because uh, you can get a very, very good network with a player, with president of companies, and this is very important that I explain to many players, not only in basketball, most of them football, for example, no? that uh, I, I'm going to explain you when, when, for example, Messi was very young, he got uh, 18 years old, okay, he started in, in Barcelona as a star, no? I explained him that it's not important if he uh, could be the, the best player in the world or he got the biggest contract in the world. The most important thing is that uh, Messi, all, all the president of companies, president of countries, everybody wants to know Messi, no? This is very important, eh? the, the, the networking that you can do when you are a player and be smart, because the real life, uh, I repeat, is when you finish, no? No, no when, when you are in, the, in this bubble of the sport, no? The, um, you decided to invest and to go into finance as a career and you um, advised Leo Messi right at the beginning. I heard a story about this earlier today. So what attracted you to invest in startups and to choose a career in finance? Well, because, uh, okay, at the beginning uh, I started um, with financials, because okay, I have money in the bank, but the, the, the banks, okay, it's better that, that you say to the banks what they have to do, that they say to you, we are going this, no? we, we, we're gonna do this, no? because if you don't understand about investments, okay, you believe in, the, in, in banks, and they said, okay, this is very good product, or this is very good investment, and I remember very well in 2002, when, when the bubble of the uh, dot-coms, the explosion of this bubble, uh, many, many people lose a, a lot of money, and, and me also, no? But it was because uh, we don't understand the, 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 the hedge funds that invest, for example, 50% in, in, uh, in this, no? In, in, in Nasdaq, for example, no? That's why I start my studies with uh, financials when I finish uh, my career. Uh, but uh, if during my career I was an investor, when I finish, I start um, creating companies because I, I prefer uh, to be entrepreneur than than investor. No, but if you are in the two sides, this is, is perfect because you you understand uh, the mentality of the investors and the mentality of the entrepreneurs. No, so that's why I, I like to to help entrepreneurs because I am one of them. No? So. Tell us a little bit about all the companies that you're involved with at the moment, aside from Global Talent. Okay, Global, Global Talent is, is my, uh, okay, uh, my last company. Um, uh, before this company, we started uh, three different companies. Um, very, very quick, uh, because I have many contacts with uh, celebrities. For me, it's very easy to talk face to face with a celebrity without the agent or without the people around the, the celebrity. So I, my first company, this with a way, I ask, I ask them, for example, okay, you, you have foundation, no? You you want, for example, give two percent or three percent of your contract to a charity, for example, no? Okay, but the player have to put money of his pocket. So we create a platform who help to raise money for the celebrity using the social media, the, the social uh, Twitter, Facebook, everything that they have, no? And we start, for example, with with Neymar. The, the football player, no? And, and with Neymar, we said, okay, you have, for example, 50 million followers, no? Okay, if you if you put in your Twitter, okay, push here, you give one euro, and uh, you participate in a lottery, and who, who wants the lottery, come to me in Brazil, 
and play with me one day and after I give you my, my t-shirt and after you come to the, the game, for example, and stay in my house one day, if you push, you can participate in this. If 10 million people push, he raises 10 million euros. So these 10 million euros goes to a charity for his foundation or for hospitals or for investigation about cancer or everything. No? So it's very easy to, to use the technology to raise money for a, for a good thing no? like this. So this was my first company, but uh, with the contact that I got with the, the players, we started a second company, the name World Mastery, to, to help um, coaches to be better coaches. No? How we start? With, for example, we, we start thinking in tennis. So we got uh, one of the best coaches of tennis, that is Tony Nadal, the uncle of, of Rafa Nadal, and we start this company with him. Now we have Abosa Malkovic, who is a very good uh, Serbian coach of basketball. Uh, we spoke with uh, Del Bosque, the, the Spanish coach of the national team. Okay, we are trying to get the, the best coaches to uh, form, form a, another coach. No? And the last one is Global Talent. That Global Talent mm, born because, uh, okay, in the industry of sports, you know that participate players, uh, clubs, leagues, uh, everything, no? uh, sponsors, all, all this industry. Okay, it's in the, in, the, in the industry and they are earning a lot of money, but the fun, the, the real people who like sports, who stay uh, every month paying uh, his carnet of, of the club, everything, not participate in the business, only stay out. No? And, and, and Global Talent is a platform, is something like a platform that uh, the fan can, can participate in the in the industry of the sport, no? For example, helping a young player, for example, a very young player, for example, uh, 13 years old who plays golf, and is the, the, the best uh, Spanish player of golf, for example, and he must go to, to Australia, but his family don't have money, so uh, Global Talent gives this money, and uh, the transaction is, for example, uh, we sell the, the future rights, of the future, no? So we can do this with the smart contracts, uh, for example, using uh, protocol Ethereum. This, this is something li like this, no? Maybe in, in Spanish I can explain you better, but it's something like, like this, no? It's difficult to explain in English. So Ferran told me if he says a few words in Spanish, please excuse him, but he expresses himself better. I was trying to translate anyway, but you're doing fine. So you have talked a little bit about what Global Talent does and blockchain and stuff, but I still want to focus a little bit more on how you got interested in that technology because you told me that you bought your first crypto in 2015. Tell me why you were attracted to invest in cryptocurrencies. Okay, because yes, because um, first of all, uh, I love technology. Uh, 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 I, for example, in, in well, I start with uh, technology, with the computers, with the uh, Sinclair Spectrum, for example, no? And I start programming in many, many languages, like Clipper, Cobol, Pascal, C, C++, a lot of very old uh, languages. And, and, okay, when I hear about uh, the Bitcoins and about blockchain, but first of all, uh, I hear about Bitcoins, I said, okay, I, I like this, but I don't understand nothing, no? no? I don't understand the protocols, I don't understand this technology. So the, the best thing, the, the best way to, to understand is to stay inside, no? That's why in 2015 I started buying bitcoins. The, the price of bitcoin was, okay, very, very, very low. And then, first two years, the, the, the price of the bitcoin was similar, no? Very, very bad or very low price, no? But after uh, at the beginning of uh, at the end of 2017, start start growing the, the price of Bitcoin, no? So, okay, I invest uh, again, no? Okay, I, I invest the second time. Uh, the value of the Bitcoin was uh, 1,800 dollars, and now, okay, after that, I go very very high, and now it's uh, around nine nine thousand, no? But it's important that the people who who want to understand this must be inside, because if not, you can speak uh, or you can read many things, but many, many people is using uh, Bitcoins only for speculation, no? Uh, so, they, so they have to hodl? 
Yeah, but, but um, okay, it's, it's good if you have, but uh, I'm thinking always uh, in, in cryptos, for example, to, to, the, to say, okay, now I want to invest in cryptos, but I put the money and forget the money, and okay, I am controlling the, the value of, of the cryptos, but I don't want to, to sell or buy, I don't like to, to do this um, trading with, with the cryptos, no? We'll see what happens in five years. Yeah. I think in five years or four years, Every, many things will, will change, and, and this is uh, a good technology, I'm, I'm sure. Not, not only for cryptocurrencies. Eh? So you believed in the technology behind the crypto, which yes. led you to invest so that you could understand how it worked. And that's what brought you to investigate the blockchain technology a little bit more. So can you tell us technically how you understand blockchain um, working for the future? in not just global talent, but other aspects of business? The blockchain technology? Yeah. It's, I think it's something like uh, internet, when, when internet starts, no? Maybe most of you um, love uh, technology, no? But uh, I, I start, for example, with the uh, modems, uh, with um, when, when, no star, when internet don't exist, exists a, a, a link, a, a net, the name is Telnet, I start using Telnet before before internet. No, when starts internet, many many people believe that internet is only for information. No, and the companies and the bankings use internet only for inform the their products or all these things. No, after that, the people believe that it's impo impossible that the internet um, substitute the, the shopping. No, and now you can see that the the, the sellings using internet is unbelievable. No. So the blockchain for me is something like the, the same, no? The, the same situation that internet uh, maybe 15 years ago or, or or 20 years ago, no? The future is no, nobody knows the future, but it's, it's true that many 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 people in the world is investigated about the the blockchain technology because the thing is that why you need uh, what you need a, a third part that uh, say that okay this transaction is good or not is good no so if, if you have a, a net that you is a question of confidence between a peer to peer not all, all the parts uh, in the net no if i say if i tell you this book and you give me this and we are agree in this transaction and for you and for me is okay this transaction no if you do this with uh, 10 million people and all these 10 million people yeah, is, is right that this transaction is okay, who is a third part who can say is, is true or not, or is good or not is good, no? This is the, the future, but uh, for, uh, for insurance, for, uh, for, uh, for everything, for all. But this is one, one part of the technology. I, I love uh, also uh, quantum computing, for example, or Internet of Things. All that is uh, disrupting uh, I like and uh, I like to to create teams or create groups of people uh, who can show me how how do this. No, I prefer to stay in companies that uh, all the people around me is much better than me, and that's why I can learn with these people. This is very good. So you think a good leader is made by is is actually somebody who chooses a team that is better than them to work together. Yes, yes. And um, for example, sports uh, show you show this, no? Especially sports of the team, no? Uh, okay, you you could be very very good player, but if the rest of the players um, don't help you, you, you are not good, no? So it's very important to the, the teamwork and all my philosophy of the the people who are who is around my my world or my companies. Uh, some of them are much better than me, for sure. So we've brought some books. Uh, Ferran, you've written four books in total. Um, some of them are bestsellers in still now. And if anybody wants a signed copy of the books, we've got some to give away tonight as well. Um, what has been your vision to evolve your businesses? And how do you see them evolving? In, in the future, you mean uh, about the future? My um, I don't know. I, I, I like, for example, uh, do, um, do, do many things. For example, I, I, I love the uh, write. That's why I, I, I write four books. I, uh, in the future, I want to continue it uh, with my companies. Um, 
And for me, it's very important every day when I wake up, uh, I don't know what will happen the day, the day, no? Every, every day is, is different. This is very good, no? And I remember when I was a player, if you wake up and you, you think, for example, of, of no, uh, today I'm very, very tired, today I have uh, big pra uh, practice, very hard practice, or I have uh, a travel very, very far, no? It's, it's bad, no? You have to put uh, targets every, every day, and with this target, uh, the day after, you have another target, and, and this is my philosophy uh, about the future of, of me, I don't know, only be happy and, 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 and learn about the people around me, nothing else. So, um, in the startup industry, what would you advise people who are thinking about um, looking towards entrepreneurship as your own personal experiences? Okay, yeah, I, I explained them that it's very, very important that um, all the entrepreneurs, for sure, uh, will have problems with the, with the company. At the beginning, in the middle of the company, so we, it's very important when you fell down, you stand up again, no? Without optimism, it's impossible to, to be a good entrepreneur, no? Another thing is, is very, very important, the, the adaptation to the conditions. So maybe you have focus in one way, but you have to change the vision. And it's important to, to move, to move uh, don't say, no, no, I want to do this, I want to do this. So uh, reinvent yourself whenever it needs to Yes, we call happen. this uh, pivotar, no? Uh, make um, people tap, okay. And, and for for startups, for example, is is very important that um, your um, you have a competitive advantage, no? If for example, uh, one one people come to me and say, okay, I have a new drink of co of cola, no? Very very good. Okay, maybe it's, it's very very good, no? But the business model is is very important because uh, you <laughs> what is your competitor? Uh, Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, no? Okay, you have a Coca-Cola drinks, a Cola drinks, but it's, dif it's difficult this uh, advantage, no? Against uh, big companies. Uh, uh, and another is like we call scalable, que sea, que sea una empresa escalable. Scalable. Scalable. Okay. It's very important, but but for me the, the main thing is, is the team, no? Is the the people uh, who is in the in the company. I'm I'm an advisor, but not not because uh, I want to to explain how they have to do. I'm an advisor because most of, most of, most of them come to me and say, okay, Ferran, uh, can you come to to one meeting? Can you only only listen about what we're talking? Nothing else, no. And after they ask me my opinion, and I say my opinion, and, and nothing else. So. You know that Gibraltar is regulated and there's plans for an incubator type um, initiative. So do you think that this is um, essential to see startups emerge successfully? And also, um, coming from Andorra, would you say that this regulatory environment is something that other regions are looking at? Ah, sometimes I, I think the, the small places um, is, is easiest to, to create a, a new ecosystem or disruptive ecosystems because uh, okay the population is is small and, and sometimes it's easiest to speak with the regulators or with the government no 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 not always but sometimes no happens for example uh, in Andorra we are trying to create uh, an ecosystem to attract these entrepreneurs or these, these startups to Andorra. Why? Because uh, the, the business model of the country must change. Because years ago, you know, m maybe like here, but uh, I don't know about Gibraltar, but, uh, but in Andorra, the, the business model was, okay, the shopping and the private banking, but the opacity of the, of the banks is finished, so they have to, to change this, this model, no? And, and in Andorra, okay, I, I went to Andorra to live because um, I'm from Barcelona, but uh, I have a big relation with Andorra during many, many years. But you know, when, when, when I was player, it's impossible. After when I got family, my children was impossible. Now they are big. My son is living in London. My daughter is living in, in Madrid. So now we are alone again. 
and we can go to, to Andorra, we, we move our companies to Andorra because I, I want to modestly no, to, to, to try to help the country because from Andorra it's very easy the, the connection with the government and you can say, okay, uh, we have this problem or, or the startups have this problem. What can uh, you do for, for these companies? No? If you attract these, these companies, you, you start creating a, a new ecosystem for startups. No? And here he, I, I hear about uh, Gibraltar and he's played me before, no? that is a very good place for the regulator. Okay, best place. I think they start to creating a new regulation for a blockchain or, or, or other companies. So this is very important because the, the big countries are waiting, are waiting, don't move, uh, don't move. Uh, it's, it's very, very difficult to start doing disruption things, no? If you don't go to, to, to Singapore or countries like, like this, no? Or, for example, uh, next week I will go to Tel Aviv. And te Tel Aviv, you know, is an uh, amazing paradise for, for startups, no? Why? Because uh, they are very, very quick with the when you need something, it's, it's easy to, to speak with the government no? of Israel to start uh, some project or some startup. No? So this is uh, that's why I'm, I'm trying to, to do something in Andorra. <coughs> so for your first year with Global Talent and having been founder of something so new, have you seen any success come from that? Quickly, in global talent. Yeah. Okay, I I I hope so. No, that uh, I I think that at the end of this year the platform will work uh, normally. Now we are okay, in, in fundraising. We are in pre-sale pre -sale mode. No. Okay. Now uh, our CEO is in Hong Kong. We are raising money from from Asia. Uh, we are thinking that the, the the platform will will be a very good success, no? But slowly, slowly, because okay, mm, that's why we start for uh, we we was talking before, no? We want to to be a we we start with a with a security token, no no utility token, because in Spain we spoke with a CMNV with the regulator, no? And the regulator said to us. This, this that you, you want to do is impossible, there's no way, this don't exist rules, it's very dangerous. And okay, we said, okay, thank you for, for, for this, no? But we, okay, uh, when you start a, some business uh, disruptor, it's normal that uh, don't exist regulation, no? But the, the, for us, the most important thing is the, the model, the business model, not the ICO, not the cryptos. For us, the, the most important is that the concept is mm, connect funds with the industry of sports and everybody we are talking about this everybody likes this concept no we have now the technology to do to do this and many players for example now Luis Suarez of Barcelona is our ambassador we have as uh, ambassador Maurice Evans of, of Lakers of NBA who is our ambassador in the United States in a few days, we we we're gonna say two more uh, celebrities, important celebrities, that they are ambassador of us and they are helping as an advisors. So I hope that uh, Global Talent will be a, a big success. We'll see what happens and maybe we come to Gibraltar. Maybe. I was just gonna say you have to say, you have to okay. bring your Global Talent to Gibraltar. Yeah, why not? Why not? Um, what's your advice for for anybody thinking of going into blockchain startups and generally your advice? Blockchain. Uh, first of all, my advice is, is don't think don't think only in raise money. Uh, for the ICO, because this, this is one of the biggest problems of the people who is thinking in start ICO. No, the the main thing is the the project and the the business, the, the model of the business. No, the, the business model or, or the company. This is the most important. You can raise money of um, regular ways or by VCs or by uh, banking, or you can create an ICO. To, to start raising this money, no? but the most important is what you're going to do with this money. No? This is very important, and after that, is, uh, 
okay, to be very clear and, and try to to get uh, the best advisors or the best people around the project. This is very important. Um, and we'll see, you, you are starting a, a disruptive uh, company, but for sure in five years or four years, everybody will say that uh, blockchain for sure will be a very, very advanced technology, like internet uh, 10 years ago.